The US Navy has joined hands with the Royal Australian Navy and the Japan Maritime Self-Defense Force in the South China Sea to conduct naval exercises. This is the fifth time this year that the US has conducted exercises with Australia and Japan to enhance interoperability. Three warships were involved in this, US Navy's John S. McCain, JMSDF's J. S. Kirasame and Australian Royal Navy's frigate HMAS Arunta. The exercise focused on surface, subsurface, and air defense maneuvers. Commander Ryan T. Easterday, commanding officer of the McCain, said in a news release, By operating with our close allies in this way, here in the South China Sea, we promote transparency, the rule of law, freedom of navigation and overflight, all principles that underpin security and prosperity for the Indo-Pacific, so that all nations in the region may benefit. Royal Australian Navy Commander Troy Duggan, commanding officer of the HMS Arunta, and JMSDF Captain Yokota Kazushi, commander of JMSDF Escort Division 8, also stressed the values of the trilateral exercises. Duggan said in a Navy news release, this activity is a valuable and important opportunity for all three nations. Operating with our partners is essential for building and maintaining high levels of interoperability and contributes to our shared commitment to the security, stability, and prosperity of the Indo-Pacific region. In this video, Defense Updates analyzes why the US, Japan, and Australia teaming up for naval exercises in the South China Sea is a direct message to China. Let's get started. This video is sponsored by War Thunder. If you are, like us, fascinated by military vehicles and technology, I recommend you give War Thunder a try. It's a military vehicle combat game which you can download and play for free on PC, PlayStation 4, and Xbox One with cross-platform support. It has a huge variety of more than 1,200 playable aircraft, tanks, helicopters, and ships from the 1930s to the 1990s which you can take to battle on land, in the air, and at sea on more than 80 theaters of war. War Thunder's been kind enough to offer All Defense Updates viewers a special bonus, which will grant you a free premium tank, aircraft, or ship, and three days of premium account time for registering using our link in the description below. So take the plunge and join more than 20 million players from around the world. China claims almost 90% of the South China Sea through its so-called Nine-Dash Line map. It says that it has indisputable sovereignty over the sea. The wide-reaching demarcation was rejected by an arbitral tribunal at The Hague in July 2016. The U.S. is aligning its South China Sea policy with this ruling and has officially rejected many of China's claims to the contested waterway. It's important to note that several countries, which include Vietnam, the Philippines, Malaysia, Brunei, and Taiwan, have disputed Chinese assertions and have overlapping claims of their own. Countries like the US, Japan, India, and Australia have no claims but want freedom of navigation. The route's significant as about $5 trillion in trade through shipping passes each year. The sea also has alleged 11 billion barrels of untapped oil and 190 trillion cubic feet of natural gas. China has tried imposing a unilateral decision as per which all ships and aircraft navigating in the area need to identify themselves to the Chinese military. Chinese Navy has heckled vessels of smaller nations like Vietnam several times in the last couple of years. It's militarized several islands in the area and has even deployed advanced missile systems like the YJ-12 anti-ship missile as well as HQ-9 surface-to-air missile. JS Kurosame is the eighth ship of the Murasami class. These vessels have a displacement of 6,200 tons, a length of 151 meters or 495 feet, and can reach speeds of 35 miles per hour or 56 kilometers per hour. The warships are equipped with the Aegis weapon system. Multiple radars are present, which include OPS-24 Active Electronically Scanned Array Radar and OPS-28 Surface Search and Target Acquisition Radar. 
The warships also have advanced electronic warfare suite. It has 16 cells Mark 48 VLS for evolved Sea Sparrow SAM for air defense and 16 cells Mark 41 VLS VL ASROC for anti-submarine warfare. Up to two Mitsubishi SH-60 J or K helicopters can be accommodated. HMAS Arunta FFH-151 is an ANZAC-class frigate of the Royal Australian Navy RAN. The ANZACs are based on Vasco da Gama-class frigates modified to meet Australian and New Zealand specifications and maximize the use of locally built equipment. Each frigate has a displacement of 3,600 tons when fully loaded. It has a speed of 50 km per hour or 31 miles per hour and has a range of 11,000 kilometers or 6,900 miles. As designed, the main armament for the frigate is a 5-inch 54 caliber Mark 45 gun, supplemented by an 8-cell Mark 41 vertical launch system for RIM-7 Sea Sparrow or RIM-162 Evolved Sea Sparrow missiles, two 12.7mm machine guns and two Mark 32 triple torpedo tube sets capable of firing MU-90 impact torpedo. One Sikorsky MH-60R Seahawk is also present. USS John S. McCain is an Arleigh Burke-class guided missile destroyer in the United States Navy. Arleigh Burke-class warships were designed as multi-mission destroyers capable of anti-aircraft warfare AAW, anti-submarine warfare ASW, and anti-surface warfare ASUW. USS John S. McCain being an Arleigh Burke class destroyer is among the largest destroyers built in the United States. It has an overall length of 509 feet that's 155 meters and a displacement of about 9,200 tons. It has in total of 96 cell Mark 41 vertical launch system VLS divided into two blocks of 32 and 64 cells. These can be configured with the combination of the following weapons based on the mission like RIM 66 M5 standard SM2 MR block 3B for air defense and anti ship roll, RIM 161 SM3 for ballistic missile defense. BGM-109 Tomahawk for land attack, RUM-139A VL ASROC anti-submarine missiles, to name a few. It also has two Mark 141 Harpoon missile launcher for anti-ship roll, as well as two Mark 32 triple torpedo tubes are present, launching Mark 46 or Mark 50 torpedoes. Two MH-60R Seahawk Lamps 3 helicopters are also present for anti-submarine warfare. Other than these, it's equipped with a long-range naval gun and multiple close-in weapon systems. U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo said recently, Beijing's claims to offshore resources across most of the South China Sea are completely unlawful, as is its campaign of bullying to control them. He further added, the PRC's predatory worldview has no place in the 21st century. Time and again, the U.S. has indicated that it will be refactoring to deploy more forces in the Asia-Pacific. Australia's 2020 defense strategy update and force structure plan indicates that it will be taking up a more proactive role in Indo-Pacific. The document seems to be taking into consideration many factors, of which the Chinese coercive actions in the region are weighing heavily. Viewers may note that this comes after Australia announced that it would spend $186 billion on its military, including long-range missiles, over the next decade amid rising tensions in the Indo-Pacific region. Japan is shoring up its capabilities. It's working to develop hypersonic weapons that can travel with speeds in excess of Mach 5. The basic idea is to deploy the HVGP or hypervelocity gliding projectile so that it can help Japanese forces take on the Chinese military. 
The Mainichi newspaper reported that the defense ministry allocated a total of 18.5 billion yen, or about 170 million US dollars, in fiscal year 2018 and 2019 budgets for research on HVGPs for the defense of remote islands, and plans to add another 25 billion yen, or 230 million US dollars, in the fiscal 2020 budget. Japan is also planning to add F-35Bs to two Izumo-class flattops. All these three nations are set to participate in naval exercises known as Malabar, sponsored by India, next month. It's clear that coercive Chinese activities have led several nations to come together and initiate strong anti-China responses. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more videos like this. Hit the like button if you find the video interesting and kindly provide your feedback in the comment section. This will help us improve.